strong. Bulb is the best. Confirmation panelists, help me out. Bulb is not the best. Damn it. <laughs> he's good. He's up there. He's very smart, but he's yet to prove it on the big stage. You know, so I think Sam, a lot of people look at him and they, they think, you know, maybe he chokes from time to time. Well, you saw it yesterday when we were zooming in on his face in the middle of the match. He's biting his fingernails, shaking his leg. Can he calm down enough to perform well on the main stage? Or will LGD continue its tear? Let's find out. We are outside, hundreds of feet from the key arena, and you still hear the roar from inside the auditorium. Just get announced. It's just amazing. It's an exciting time to be a Dota fan. I think it's amazing that like all of these uh, interviews with the players, like Ten everyone is saying how much they learned from from like the past years, from past TIs, and that is also why the, the competition is just getting harder and harder. Like flies uh, talking about how. They really want to win the games, and uh, was it Yao? It was pretty yeah, yeah, listen to Yao. Yeah, he yeah. talks about all the perspective that he's been gaining over these years. I mean, he's been to like, you know, what, five, six, seven TIs at this point. Yeah. You, you, know, you learn and you almost force yourself to become the player in person that it takes to win. And you learn how to do that by playing with different teams, players, losing, winning. And in that sense, Bulba should be very well prepared, right? DC he's, yeah, he's, you know, losing is learning, right? And Bulba's done plenty. I mean, that he's playing <laughs> a lot of teams. <laughs> <laughs> he's losing a lot. And we actually see the oh. Spirit Breaker here, which is Bulba's best hero, right? Sean? You know what? Spirit Breaker <laughs> is most people's best hero, let's be honest. My best hero. Space Cow, you go, that guy. You light a cigarette, he crosses the map, Ten and when you're done, three. bam, crashes right in. You know, at this point, uh, you know, you bring in this up Five before with the Nyx Assassin Ban Queen of Pain right out the gate. And of course, Night Stalker, no stranger to first picks over on LGD, but Shadow Shaman is a hero that I don't think has been picked as much, but LGD's I absolutely love to this bang. character. LGD has actually been picking it a lot. They are one of the few teams that really likes to open with the Shadow Shaman. Yeah, Yao and DTC love the hero a lot. Just Dropping wards on towers. Yeah, I, I, coming into TI, I was, I was a pretty optimistic about Shadow Shaman. I, st I still am. I think he's a pretty solid hero in the five position. He brings a lot to the team. I think he scales incredibly well, Our having GDs two instantaneous disables. Also, the wards, they do so much damage, especially when you get Nack and upset there. Can you talk to me about this digital chaos ban on Beastmaster? Well, you know, we saw Yao, or I think it was Yao, just feed relentlessly against VP with it the other day. Uh, it was 11, excuse me. Um, Ten seconds. I think remaining. they're just. I, I don't know. He also got a new item in the recent Five seconds Ti7 remaining. treasure. So every time I see this like new cool item for a hero, I see the hero pick more. Like Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight was like all the craze as soon as the Golden Shield came out. Yeah. Maybe. Do you think everybody at home should be buying chess to support the tournament and cool show up their Beastmaster? Yes. How much shilling are we going to do in this? Pack? You know, I would like you. All. I'm just saying, there's a correlation. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we all have signatures as well, and you can feel free to get our garage. Yeah, let's just anymore. let's just finish this thing up. Really. <laughs> <laughs> got a URL you want to plug? Five seconds remaining. We good. We're good. I'm good. We're good. I like Spirit Breaker good. against Night Stalker. Yeah. I think it gives the team a lot of direction. It says, you know, it forces you guys to group up, and it forces fights constantly. And Night Stalker really wants to play around vision and take advantage of you. Find his opponents and keep them contained. And you also mentioned that synergy with Night Stalker making everything nighttime and Lycan functioning better at night. Yeah, Lycan's got that night vision, so it can work well. Um, Lycan is also a way to actually scout a bit with the wolf, so when you don't see anything, you at least see something from the. Marana chosen from LGD, and we've seen Night Stalker Marana as a little death squad throughout this TI, waltzing around, picking they up. They play a mid, though. Mostly. Maybe actually goes more the older builds with the scepter. One thing to note about DC, which I think is one Five of their weaknesses, I think remaining. their core players are very limited on their hero pools. We've seen Abed playing the same three to four heroes ever since the group stage. Mason's been mostly playing that, you know, that Sven, Lifestealer, Lycan. And they picked both of them incredibly early here. I think worrisome about either them being picked by LGD or Ban. And they're probably afraid that they're going to ban them, and they, it just means that they really want to have their proper pick. pick in this game. Dazzle. Dazzle's great. He's, you know, he has, he, for what he lacks in catch, Spearbreaker kind of makes up for. 
So in that sense, they're a good 4 or 5 support combo. Spirit Breaker will force the fight, Ten Dazzle seconds. will help Remaining. your team win those. Works really well with Lycan and his summons, and if Quap ever gets Five into a sticky situation, Remaining. you can Shallow Grave him and bail him out there. Speaking of course with limited hero pulls, I think Ame has been playing like terribly in a troll, a disproportionate amount compared to other position ones. Yeah, and the troll has most been with Magnus. Eleven has been playing Magnus a lot on the off plane, but uh... I'm starting to get a better feel on troll. I'm finally under I'm, I'm coming around to it and I'm understanding it. He's he's very good against other carries. He just wants to get on top of them and bash them. Yeah, he's very good against carries like Sven, uh, Luna. We saw Miracles troll the other day against the Luna, and he was just on top of the Luna, and Luna was trying to be a carry, but he was just running away. There's the Chaos Knight. He's yeah. definitely lacking in a uh, Lucian Heroes could present a big problem for them. Yeah, I mean, bring up what we brought up earlier in the day, that Chaos Knight has had some unbelievable games, getting a heart and feeling unstoppable. Ten He's also had some very remaining. pathetic games where... Without any good kills in the mid game, he's kind of Five absent. Seconds but remaining. At the very least, it's another stun for LGD. More lockdown for the Queen of Pain. Yeah. The Chaos Knight should be quite good against Lycan, right? Because both Chaos Knight and Lycan really want to uh, fight during their uh, ultimate. So whenever Lycan is going to ultimate, uh, Chaos Knight can ultimate to be able to fight them during like yeah, that's the a good Lycan point. ultimate. I never thought of that. Yeah. Lycan's not going to just run into a bunch of CK illusions. Could be a reactionary ult. I. I would worry about Timbersaw for LG, like a Timbersaw pick by DC here. I think that DC is definitely going to pick up some sort of AOE to help deal with the CK. Yeah. LGD's turn to bat. Must be the offlane, right? Yeah, I only like him for F zero. LGD's turn yeah, to bat. Yeah, for F zero. Oh. I can do Timbersaw. I think I think Spirit Breaker is enough. Magnus. There it is. Magnus for LGD. Many teams were first banning Magnus up against LGD, but. This is uh, also really nice with Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight historically has a very difficult time farming. Magnus can use his power to give remaining. Chaos Knight a much faster opportunity to gather up gold in case he can't get those Five kills. It's pretty remaining. unusual though, because uh, Chaos Knight, most of his damage is from his illusions, which yeah. you don't really empower. Usually you just want like a BKB carry that doesn't have any illusions. Yeah, I kind of like where DC's at right now. Final ban Enigma from LGD is a pretty solid ban. That would have been some nice AOE to help deal with all the CK illusions. But, uh, I, what, do you, what do you guys think about Timbersaw? Any opinions? I think he works well with the Spirit Breaker because Spirit Breaker locks down the hero and Timbersaw's uh, problem is if people are like, running away, so you need stuns. Yeah. The only problem is that they actually own Spirit Breaker. Yeah. You usually want uh, something with a lower cooldown than maybe his ultimate setup. So maybe some more disable. Sanking is still in the pool. That could be an option. Enigma ban was very good. It really worked very well. This lineup. Having a lot of interrupts for DC is really important. Not only is it AoE and control for the CK and his illusions, or lockdown for the Mana, but also the Rasa is going to be shackling people. And if you can't interrupt shackles, that's a long duration control. I think Queen of Pain has to go for you. Do that because either Lycan or Dazzle has an interrupt. Oh, you're thinking Queen of Pain needs to be an interrupter at this point. Maybe. Or I mean, Orchid. I mean, like, I can just go book and just rocket, like, run up the Shadow Shaman and then we can't do that. So. Meepo on wow. Abed. The crowd loves it. I know the crowd loves Meepo anyways, but of course, Abed, one of the most famous Meepo players out there, grinding his way to over 10k MMR with it. And of course, I'm thrilled that we get the chance to see it here on main stage. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Day9. And indeed, what a way to finish the draft. Digital Chaos getting that elusive Abed Meepo in as the final pick. I mean, the question is, Fogged, is how good of a Meepo game is this? It's pretty damn good. Uh, he can snowball really hard. The lane is pretty good for him as well. He doesn't really have to deal too much with those right clicks from the Mirana. He can actually just tank it up a bit. And then, as we know, Meepo goes to the jungle. And yes does what he does. And he has Howl benefit on top too, so this could Five be seconds, really cool. Maybe. And they have this uh, this pressuring lane, it looks like. They're gonna have Queen of Pain. Maybe they even do some type of aggro try lane here for DC. Maybe they do like Spirit Breaker, Queen of Pain, Dazzle. We'll see Boba moving, of course, but to try to pressure that CK, at least in the start. I'm, I'm just, we're blessed, dude. We I'm, get a, we get a Meepo insane. game, the first Meepo game of the tournament here. Something that, yeah, exactly, that was being waiting for throughout the group stages. Oh, yeah. Obviously, sort of time and time again being banned out against teams like Digital Chaos, having Arbed on this Meepo. 
Howl and with Meepo is also something absurd oh, that's that we don't good. get to see too often. I mean, it, yeah, Howl with Meepo, extremely good. The, the heal bomb from Dazzle, of course, there's a yep. lot of synergy going on from Digital Chaos's lineup. And as you said, do LGD have the tools to deal with an Arbet Meepo heading to the jungle, getting this free farm and becoming this very, very big force 20 minutes in with the stat build, almost certainly getting those Dragon Lances out. It's, it's going to be scary. We're going to see what happens here. At the same time, LGD's lineup, an, in an interesting thing that you mentioned upon, we've got Somnus on the Mirana. Yeah, they, maybe they don't seem Mirana. to play this for a few months, by the way. So they haven't yeah. played it in quite a while. I know he used to play it, and then uh, yeah. well, we, I was talking to Jack a little bit, and he was saying how they, they kind of substitute the Lesh as a substitute for that Mirana. Instead of like having that one, they kind of suit the same needs of that uh, damage in the mid lane. But this could be this could be really cool. The one concern I have for DC is their catch. Their catch right now is full butt. Yeah. Sure, Abed can get out of control, and that's where the nets start becoming uh, much better for that. But it still is going to be a little bit concerning for them to deal with that massive team fight that LGD can bring to the table too. So they need to have a good early game. I'm going to be looking at Bulba making big plays. The skewer. Eleven actually puts himself on the high ground with Dubu. Yeah, they're going for a man versus man. They have got Mason in the neighborhood as well. He's going to come in from behind. And in fact, with the heal bomb, Eleven's being brought down. There's an arrow. Arrow flies through. We'll connect. Who's going to get the first blood? That's the question. Oh! It's close. LGD do get the first blood. That arrow is certainly making sure that LGD are able to take it. DC, of course, will get the train. But that little bit of bonus gold going the way of LGD. It's always huge. Like, this is the offlaner who can struggle to get some experience from time to time as a Magnus. Sure, this time around he's versus a Dazzle Lycan. He should be able to get a good amount up there, but getting first blood, that's the dream right there. Now he's got so much more region to deal with. He can trade hits better. He should have a pretty damn good matchup up there now. Yeah, and, and uh, as sort of, sort of the panel said, they were talking about whether this uh, aggressive trial is just going to come out. It, it's going to be, by the looks of it, just the safe lanes. And, and indeed, did you mention this Magnus lane up on top? Okay. Uh, who, who's kind of, kind of going to come out on top of these laning stages? Do you, do you feel that there's someone that has got the, the better matchups because of this? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried for the Queen of Pain. I think Bulba has to make a lot of space for that one. He does have the stout shield already to pressure that lane. I think we're going to have like mostly trade farms, to be honest with you. All lanes seem fairly even. I'm not super comfortable with most Meepo matchups. I know he has like, reduced base damage, but this guy's a master of Meepo. He should be able to do just fine with it. And he can at least push the wave out fa faster than Mirana. Mirana lacks in mana to be able to spam Star, Star Storm in comparison to Meepo using Pool. And I think it's certainly going to be interesting to see how LGD do deal with the Arbet Meepo, because there's no way that you kind of come into this game and you don't expect that, that Meepo to come through. It's, it's hard to believe that this has kind of sneak, sneaked past LGD drafting phase. They, they must have known that there was the chance that this was happening, and you'd expect that they, they've got some sort of a plan to deal with it. Yeah, the, the thing is that they did they did pick the Queen of Pain in the first two. That can be that big deterrent, because we you know Abed loves that Queen of Pain, but it's a really smart move. DC putting in the off lane, and now they're going to put the pressure quite hard for this Queen of Pain and Earthbreaker versus this dual lane. Night Stalker should probably, uh, Victoria on the Night Stalker should probably stay down here just at the beginning to make sure that they don't get they don't, they don't have to pressure the CK at the start. There's a couple levels, and then the safe lane is fine. Once Ame has one or two points in the reality rift, they can start to threaten Bulba whenever he steps up. Because, like the panel mentioned, PPD was saying, there's like very little ways for them to actually stop the shackles from the Shadow Shot. It'd be super punishing in that lane. True, and on this top lane, as well as sort of as you mentioned earlier, the fact that Lemon gets that first blood, he's, he's going to do all right here, isn't he? When it's just him and Mason, yeah. as you say, trading farm in the lane, Maybe the Dazzle heads over, tries and gets a bit of a look in, but unlikely they're going to be able to, to kill this Magnus with the, the availability of the Skewer to escape. It's up to Eleven to be the big team fight for LGD. He is pretty much all of it for them until the Imirana starts getting more online. So him getting a, having a good start is crucial for them here into the mid-game. If he gets an early blink timing, it could completely mess up everything that DC has. But it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's the Meepo. The Meepo chain puts a wrench into everything because a couple charges comes out from Bulba. They get some nice nets once the Meepo gets the double Meepos out. And that's where you can see the Mirana just dying over and over again to tower dives. So we're going to be watching the two floors as, as we do tend to right now in the meta, how they mirror each other's movements. I mean, definitely for the time being, this bottom lane, DC have to be careful. Once there's a couple of levels on... Both of LGD supports a lot of catch and control to try and deal with this off lane, not uh, off lane Queen of Pain as it is at the moment. Teaming up with the Spirit Breaker, Arme CS at the moment looking pretty good, not being slowed down too much by the presence of both Forever and Bulba in this bottom lane. Now killing Arme is a bit difficult. Killing the supports is where it's where they're going to be looking for their options. Bulba is now level two, so they have that threat now to at least make moves around the map with him. 
But as we do see a lot of teams do for Spirit Breaker is they put River Wards. Very important to do that versus that hero, so you can always see the charges coming in. They do have one set up bottom. See how the mid lane starts to, to turn towards now as Somnus did have the lead in ZS, but now Arbed has that second Meepo out. Yep. And we, so, now Dubu does make the move. So okay. I thought they were going to do this from the beginning, putting that uh, 1v1 kind of matchup for the Lycan versus the Magnus, and then doing a pressure lane versus the CK. So that's what they're starting to do now. Uh, Mason's going to get full experience, and Nighttime's going to hit early, and they're going to benefit from Hal at the same time as the Night Stalker has the, his Hunter in the Night Eye. So we'll see who's able to make the first move off of that. Charge oh, yeah. coming out on Tom. Cancelled up my Bulba. Yeah, just teasing him away from the creep wave. Trying to slow down Arme's farm. So it seems like DC's fine with just giving Eleven a very good lane and a good start in this game. Already has Soul Ring picked up, so it will kind of the spam. Mason a little bit, but Mason with the uh, Feral Impulse doesn't really care too much about Star Wars spam. Of course, DC are going to have this opportunity as well. Once Arbet's uh, a certain point, he can look towards the jungle. They can give up this mid lane. Arbet? Try and get level 6 quick on this. Arbet's not doing so hot right now. 23 and 4 to the 14 and 1. Yeah, Somnus has been keeping really control of this lane. Just slightly ahead of our bottom lane. Bit of a go here. They will go forward onto Doobie. Does get the heal off. Self brave. The shackle there to hold him in position. No to Bulba, trying to find Victoria. We'll get, get him. Doobie will go down in response. Just the one for one. See if Forever and Bobble can do anything more. But there's a lot of mana in the tank for Forever. And DD jumps forward. Look at the Yao. They've got the charge forward as well. And DC, they'll clean out the two on this bottom lane. Arme now back with the presence of Victoria. Tries to bring Forever in. Not quite enough control there from the CK. Having that level two howl there, giving all that extra damage for them to get the kill first. Very important. Something you always have to worry about when you're playing versus that Lycan. It's now going to be nighttime too, so you have to make sure that you remember about the double aspect of the Howl. Even though you do have darkness, you, are, you have the Hunter in the Night from the Night Stalker. Fighting into Howls at this time is pretty difficult if you want to go for like a try v try action. And DC has a very strong try lane if they keep it down there. But now we do see the movements coming out. Bobo wants to pressure the other lanes. Dubu staying behind Forev, just being a little bit careful. Forev's Forev's not really too ri in risk of dying until the unless the Night Stalker rotates in. Levels on Victoria, two and a half at the moment. And under this cover of first night, we'll see if they can achieve something. They once again are set up down on the bottom lane for Ahmed to lead in. Don't quite get the rift there as Forev heads into the tree line. Even if they do, it's relatively hard with Dubu's presence there behind him, as you mentioned. Maybe 35 and 8 CS now on the Moran into the 23 1 of Meepo. Abed had to already resort to start hitting some jungle creeps to make sure he can keep up, but already falling behind in levels as well. Bulba down here. See if he can do anything. I think LGD, yeah, they should be aware. They did have the ward out. Abed could be in some trouble here. They do see the rotation coming up, but you know, still gonna watch himself. Still a walking courier on DC. And this top lane, this 1v1, as it has been for the most part. Mason certainly taking the edge. To be fair. 35 against the 20 of 11. So, yeah, definitely the how coming to work here. And as you mentioned, having that passive regen, allowing Mason to be that little bit more aggressive in this lane and have the potential of pulling the Magnus out. He's playing it very, very well at the moment on this line. Yep. The, the Mag is, I, I think Eleven's still very happy. It's like sure he's not getting the last hits, but the levels are the big importance, at least for the Mag early on. Mag, blink daggers, of course, are super important, but the fact that you're off lane Mag, gonna be hitting level six at the six minute mark is pretty damn good. Look at this down bottom, trying to go aggressive. Instant hex down to Bob with Hold him back. Arme trying to go back in return. They do get the shackles off. Rotation. Jow, focus. Jow's gone. They've lost the one for one. Can LGD find anything more with this? Indeed, they brought Somnus in from the mid lane. Looking to chase down Bob, but he'll go for the charge. Are they trying for the arrow? Oh, nice cancel of the charge there to dodge the arrow. Bulba still could be in trouble here. We'll see how heavy Somnus wants to come searching for him. And it looks like they're. Just gonna leave it be, so Bulba will be fine for now. This is where Meepo catches up, this is what we were talking about. So the mid lane, you can you can trade some farming, but Murano was getting a couple extra harassment hits. Alright, so he pulled ahead, but then Abe just goes to jungle. So Meepo does. And now he's perfectly caught up, same, just about the same net worth and levels. And he should accelerate much faster than the Murano now at this point. Ah, oh, bottom lane, Arme gets the catch. The three of them do manage to find forever out alone. Didn't quite have Dubu around with him as Dubu's headed up towards the top lane on the Dazzle. Victoria was able to close the gap and get the Crippling Fear on there, so that nighttime silence. He doesn't have, if Forf doesn't have backup, that's where he's really susceptible to dying when they have that tri lane. 
Down there. If it's only a dual lane, he should be fine if he's full health, but with Victoria, Victoria. Victoria's here, but Bulbas got eyes on him. Charges forward. There's the first net for F. Jumping into position. They managed to trap the Night Stalker. I've taken down immediately. Nothing that Somnus can do in response with DC's poor man there in the neighborhood. Yeah, Tried to double Wraith Ben, not finished up for the Meepo. It's, he's super tanky on top of how. 1200 HP on Treads. Oh, and rather interesting as well. So the build from uh, 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 our bet this game looked to be the, what, the two Wraith Bands into the Diffusal. So obviously great amounts of damage yeah, and a great amount of chase. Massive amount of agility, great yeah. chase, and it can also purge off the power. So they're up to leave. That would be really useful. Bottom, another go here on to Dubu with the oh, silent the crit. Death. No chance for Dubu to respond. LGD, they're finding quite a bit from this bottom lane now. DC letting... This, this safe lane Chaos Knight, Chaos Knight Armour getting pulled to the kills. 2-0-2 two, two at the moment on the bottom. And the CS looking, looking good for him as well. Still there, Mason definitely having the, the best time on the map at the moment. He's, he's getting the solo lane, solo XP. Very, very few CS being missed by this Lycan. And that's on it. I mean, it's Mason on it. Oh, on here we are right now. DC looking to try and switch things around on this bottom lane. They come in with the Meepo. Get Arme. They've got the route onto Yao as well. They should be able to clean up both of these. Arbed already making these early rotations. Making sure that the lanes go the way of DC. Yeah, beautiful rotation by Abed. Doesn't need to always be jungling. That's the nice thing about a Meepo is you're off the map a lot of times. So when you make those rotations, it's unexpected. And it was actually rare this time around. LGD had no real wards on the map for quite a long time. They go for the RP play on Mason top, but they actually end up canceling it. They shapeshift away. But yeah, there was about four minute downtime where LGD had little to no vision whatsoever on the map. Now we see the Night Stalker went around and placed the aggressive ward to watch the enemy jungle and they lane ward bottom. So they can know the movements. Somnus? Something. Yeah, right. So that rotation though from Abed, it did cost him their mid lane tower. So maybe definitely recognizing what he wants to do every time the Meepo goes to the jungle, goes to the rotation, pressure it, and it gives you the, always the windows to go to go invade the jungle. What a lane, Bulba. Give some bashes here, get one of them. Get anything more out of it? Doesn't look like he can. We'll let Victoria go. But uh, this is true, you know, you say about getting the space in the mid lane, they're also now getting the space on the top lane. Now even LGD. Taking towers, same time DC are down on the bottom, they're looking for the tier 1 trade. And at the moment it looks like they should get it, indeed they'll take that tower down. Mason gets the last hit though. See if Ahmed is able to get the top last hit comparison. No! Oh, 11 snatched. That's gonna get him closer to Blink Dagger, and like we mentioned, that is the big team fight for LGD. Yeah, absolutely. If LGD have this Magnus ready to strike at this stage, it's going to be hard for DC to react. Victoria charged up only level 3. Should be able to get punished here very easily with the rotation. Howl used as well. A bash right will do it. I don't even need the bash by the forever. Times the kill. Radiance middle tower. Towards top, 2B. Quick to make sure that Somnus doesn't grab oh. himself. The regen rune. the mark. To walk it out as well. Still, our bet. This is what we sort of talked about in the draft. The fact that this Meepo, whatever goes on in the game, he's going to find his farm. Ten minutes in, well on the way to the Diffusal Blade. Only only a few hundred gold away from having it. I mean, a 10, 11 minute Diffusal Blade on a Meepo, it is going to be so disruptive. If he gets involved in the fights and he can rely on Dubu, that Hal from Mason to keep him alive, it's, it, crazy. it's going to be so hard for LGD to just deal with this incredibly stacked early game Meepo. Still, the team fight is favorable to LGD with the, when the Magnus, because he's going to have a super fast blink, 200 gold away from that one. And as we're looking at maybe, as we see what item he queues up, he has actually a Yule Scepter queued up on the Murana. So more setup for himself, also some type of save, so he doesn't have to deal with getting chain netted and chain bashed up, and actually have some type of save potential from that. Yeah, but certainly not the, in, in terms of offering the highest damage and fighting potential, you know, we see obviously the team. Marana mainly go for that sort of physical build, getting their diffusals, on the, the Maelstrom and such. So it's certainly going to be putting the damage output on a bit of a hold from him. Uh, I guess they can definitely look towards Arme from packing the real punch in this fight. He's nearly got the armlet done, and uh, obviously with the Empower as well. Still a lot that can come out from LGD if yeah. they get the catch. That's, that's like the cool thing. It's like they had trades going off, so DC made the, the trade going off where they wanted 4F to build the pressure to CK and get some farm while they allow 11 to, of course, get that farm top. But the issue with that is now he's going to have high levels of empower and an early blink dagger for their team fight. So not only do they have 
great team fight, but when the when the lull is happening, when there's not really fights happening, that CK can just accelerate his growth with that power much quicker. Because like like Sean, like Day9 mentioned on the panel, you know? CK can suffer in place of I'm interested to see who makes the first move, whether it be a DC looking to utilize Arbed's Diffusal Blade. Or they could, Eleven's gonna make a go with this Blink Dagger ASAP. DC could try to force pressure, like uh, not the next night time, but the one afterwards, and maybe go for a sneak Roche. The Lycan and the Meepo with the Vlads on Lycan can actually get get it brought down incredibly fast. We actually just see, I think Abed just pinged out that Roche area, and we see LGD's actually already shooting arrows in there, kind of expecting something to happen. The very deep aggressive wards from LGD able to watch when 4 f was farming and anything that's going on in DC's jungle, but for the time being. Very quiet. Dubu is very far stepped up now though. Looks like he's gonna be able to get brought down from the rotations. Okay, and the wrap around and indeed no chance for the dazzle here with three of LGD closing in. Somnus to pick up the kill will give him enough gold to finish off that Yule Scepter. And they certainly may look for more. Having that blink dagger ready in the waiting on 11. So rule of thumb for us with the Meepo. Usually about one level per minute, and Abe is keeping up actually ahead of that, so almost level 14 now at the 12 minute mark. Once he gets that blink dagger, they can start to put a lot of aggressive moves, because he's kind of like their, their team fighter in a way, as the Meepo, since he's so accelerated. Yeah, this is definitely the scary thing for LGD. You know that if you ask Abe now how happy he is with his early 12 minutes of this game, he's, he's going to say this is perfect. Yeah. I'm sure, he, he suffered a little bit in the CS very early on, but that's not showing at all now. A clear 1,000. Uh, almost ahead of Somnus on the overall net worth, top of the top of the board at the moment in this game. This Meepo is going to be terrifying if LGD cannot take him out of the fight to begin with. They keep checking that Roach, they're very afraid of it. Strong arrows constantly every time he sees off the map. Should be fine, Yao, and indeed straight away there's the jump. We'll turn with the Hex onto Ferev, but Yao, not to survive this. Bulba gets the bash. DC keeping control in terms of kills. Still, overall net worth very even across the map because of the fact that Eleven has been doing so well on this offlane Magnus. Yeah, similar kind of pickups there, right? Yao dies, but Yao at least placed his, his uh, Mass Serpent Wards and took out the tower. And while, and while he was backing up, he got picked off. And Dubu, of course, died bottom earlier. So those five supports getting picked off a little bit, as expected, when the map just becomes, you know, this kind of farm war. And definitely, you know, when it does become this farm war, well, the biggest discrepancy is always going to be the difference, isn't it, between Eleven and uh, Forever? Yes. Because without fights, this Queen of Pain, you know, Forever's going to suffer in this sort of passive moment. There's not a lot that, that he can really do. Whilst the rest of his team farms up, he needs to try and get involved in some sort of action. They do not have the blink on Arbed as well as the defusal, so DC, I mean, I'm sure if they see an opportunity, DC will take the fight. At the moment, it's just avoiding each other, going for the tier two trades. Looks like both teams on track to get this. Neither having the chance to respond. I mean, maybe LGD can come back to hold this, but no, it looks like they're just going to accept that this one's gone in return. And just the trading of towers and farms continues in this game. As we've started to certainly hit a bit of a slope. I mean, it's very even. Thousand gold lead for LGD, thousand experience lead for DC. So it's pretty much exactly even at this point. This, of course, the level discrepancy from the Meepo, but that's gonna happen. But then you look at the next the next big three. LGD is very high level on their three cores. 13, 12, and 10 on the Mirana, Mag, and CK respectively. And they actually make their own way into the pit with the CK reality of Rift minus armor plus the mass serpent wards. They have more than enough to bring this down quickly. And DC are have made us slightly, but indeed with the speed that this is going, can they actually contest it? Bulba has the control onto the Night Stalker on the side of it, but LGD, they're going to easily be able to finish this off, grab the Aegis, now they jump forward, bring in Bulba! Take down the Breaker as well as securing that Aegis into that's the hands a, of Arme. That's a big problem. They've got the Blink Mag already too, they can start, start to pressure. I don't even know if they want to though, I don't think they actually feel like they need to. Go for a straight tower push, they can just force their lanes out and wait for DC to kind of come to them when they have this. They can probably wait a couple of minutes until everybody's more healthy, and then they can reset, and when the lanes are better, they can actually make a full frontal siege with that Aegis. And we see on Arbet as well, really valuing the... Just the, just the value of the stats on the Diffusal. I don't think he even used a single charge, but straight away upgrades it to that level 2 to yeah. get that very efficient boosted amount of Vagi for the price that you're paying. Yeah, pretty surprising to see him upgrade it that better. Though. Now, if he does use all the charges, he has to buy a whole new one and start to refresh that, so... 
But yeah, definitely just wanting that straight up sheer agility. There we go again. I mean, Bulba, he was ready to go. The rest of his team not quite in position, ready to follow through behind him. Tension's high there in the booth, as we can see. He's got to keep his cool here. 97, though, DC definitely not in a bad position at all. Our bed, as we continue to say. We're still yet to really see the potential of it in, in a fight, other than that one gank very early on down bottom. Yeah, we still haven't seen, you know, the, the RPs or anything. Yeah. A lot of the thing is that Mason's going to have to put in a lot of work with his wolves. Once he gets that level 12, uh, uh, level 4 wolves, since he's actually... He's level 12 and he doesn't have them yet. He went for the second position. Couple other points and everything else. He has to be sure to scout them. That's just the important thing in the fights. Because if they don't know where that mag is, the RP can be devastating if they hit the Meepo. And worth noting as well, of course, Mason, going for the build that we, we started to see fall a little bit out of favor. You know, recently a lot of Lycans going back for the Necro Rush. But obviously having the Vlad, it's absolutely perfect when you have this Meepo. Something that Arbe is going to yep. benefit off. And he's and playing versus uh, you know, CK with an Empower. So B CK exactly. will build BKB, and with the Empower, he can just cleave down the Necro units and not care whatsoever. So wanting to have armor, that's what Mason's focusing focus on this time around. Sure. Armor, armor, armor. Here we go, actually. LGD now with the smoke. But as it is, they've sort of passed DC entirely. DC are actually in LGD's own jungle. Let's see if LGD realize this anytime soon. They don't actually, by the looks of it, have any of their own wards in their, their own jungle. It's DC having full vision of LGD's half of the map there. And LGD will simply reveal themselves, start to push down mid. The question is if Digital Chaos themselves can now get in a, a bit of a wraparound and catch LGD from behind. They're starting to move over, but it will be scanned out by LGD. LGD aware of this movement from Digital Chaos. Now they turn back towards them. Arrow straight away onto the Dazzle. Dubu does get the grave off. We'll see what the rest of DC wants to do. It looks like they will just accept the loss of the Dazzle and back away, not wanting to take this fight. Arbe gets a bit of pressure down on the bottom lane, does force LGD back. Instantly poofs back to join the rest of his team. He's just a Dazzle down. And in fact, still in the neighborhood, we may see more action happen. Eleven, he's going to get charged towards Yao as well by Bulba, who goes for a quick charge by. Bulba's to walk trouble. Off. Yeah, Eleven, he's going to be ready to punish this one. Jumps forward, skewers back the Space Cow. And Bulba there, maybe just creating space, trying to make sure that LGD didn't therefore jump in on any of the bigger members of Digital Chaos. They've got view of Mason too yeah, with the Yule Scepter, more Yule. catch. That's going to pay off massively if they get the kill, and indeed with the stun connection, there's no escape there for Mason. That Yule's pick up indeed from, from Somnus, maybe. Being the perfect item there for the catch. Starting to get pretty concerned for DC. They have this super far Meepo, so we can still we can still give them that, of course, but the other two cores are starting to fall heavily far behind. Forev hasn't been given the chance to actually use Sonic Wave, so Queen of Pain can flash farm, of course, with the with her abilities, but ideally you want to be fighting as an offline Queen of Pain. That's where you get your gold, that's where you get your momentum swing. So it's Mebo and then three big cores of LGD, and like we said, LGD has the team fight. Yeah, and they're ready to go high ground. We'll see what DC can do to stop this. The Serpent wards are out. Five seconds and Mason's back in. How do you enter into this fight as Digital to Chaos? They have to be so careful with Eleven keeping himself in the back lines, ready to blink in with an RP for the count to initiate. Man, DC does not really have good deep push. The only thing they really How have they is that Queen of Pain's going to bring them in, ready to fight. Dubu has to grave himself, Eleven. Shadow Blade up on the side, they do have vision upon him, forward charging, he gets the dust down for him. With the I got Eleven. Oh, the RP! Comes out! The Star Storm as well! LGD absolutely destroying Digital Chaos. There's there. no buyback either. I bet actually bought the it, Eagle Song. I mean, if they realize this, they could maybe even go for a finish. No, a whole minute without that Meepo. They're going to heal up. They're unlikely to know. They're unlikely to know. They will back off. Oh my god. They like almost brought him down too. They kind of isolate him. The Spirit Breaker charge comes through, but living with about RP. 100 HP, the everyone's that he stacked. got it off. We'll see it here again. I mean, how many did he quite catches in it? It looks like three it looks to right, me, but, but... And they know he's there, they're pinging him out. Bulba makes a beeline straight for him. But there's not quite the control. He goes for the ultimate, but immediately that silence there. The silence from Victoria stopping the nether strike from Bulba meant that the RP was successful. Brilliant play from the Night Stalker. And off the back of that, of course, as we saw there, cleaning up that mid lane, Rax. You see the relief instantly as Absolutely. soon as he's dying and he's feeling the pressure, then gets the RP off. That's... Incredibly super close, opportune so. moment, and that's the first time now we see the Sonic Wave used. That was the first time we see the RP used, and now look at that gold lead. Look at that experience lead. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Digital Radiance Chaos. I mean, I, it was exactly as you mentioned coming into that, dealing with this sort of pressure this early on 
it's not great. You know, Digital Chaos, they want to be the ones making the jump. They want to have the fight starting with Arbed immediately bursting down a couple of LGD's members. But when LGD come down your mid lane like that, drop your wards, make themselves at home in, the, in your base, it's very hard to get them out. I love this by Ame as well, picking up a Blink Dagger now too. too. So if he isn't in the position to follow up for the RPs, now he always will be. So nighttime, now we have smoke for smoke action. They've got to do something with this. Oh, no, get the high ground first. They are on the high ground first. Indeed, straight away, Bulba does get the charge off on the side. Arme, bringing Duber in, has the ult back online with Arme. Getting bursted down. Sonus looking towards Bulba now, turns attention back towards the Meepo. They have already lost two. Arme gets critted down there. Arme doing the work on this Chaos Knight. They've taken down three. RP just comes on call down 11. Comes in for the cleanup. LGD team wiping Digital Chaos. And we asked ourselves if they had a plan for this Meepo, and I mean, whatever they're doing, it's certainly working this game, LGD. Look at the damage done in this fight. 6,600 by CK and 6,000 by Mirana. That's insane at this point. With the Mjolnir picked up so early. Eleven was forced to buy back for that cleanup RP, but they're gonna get another rack out of this. Absolutely worth it. Straight in on the top lane. With three members down, they're gonna have to red back up in a second, but no Mason. Dude. No Arbet for a while, they will get the skewer back and it is straight away with the stun, they'll burst down for him. With the Sonny Wade, now looking for the turnaround, does take down Arme. That's the Chaos Knight gone for 50, if they can find these two as well, this will be a massive hold. Red will get a second, but still, Eleven and Victoria, they're too big and strong. Bulma tries to charge in, but Eleven, he can turn, he'll look to drive fight back, Yao comes in with a quick zap. And the Raxes are dead already. They're gone. And GG is it, called. He wants it. to reset this move on to game Woo. two because game one, LGD just playing on another level. Absolutely insane start for the series for LGD. They didn't really let DC do what they wanted to do with their lineup is get that rush, have the Aegis to take fights around the RP with Amiibo with Aegis. And they just didn't allow that to happen. They were just kind of farming around, always checking to make sure that rush. And then they all kind of grouped up together, even though they don't have this like crazy sustain lineup. They have the RP. They know they have that big team fight. And during those like low periods, we saw the CK just gradually building up net worth, while 4 slowly but surely started to decline.